Well, thank you for joining the Inform Protein webinar, Building Trust Through Protein Verification Testing. I'm Paul Klinger, the Business Development Director for LGC's Global Supplement Testing and Inform Certification Programs, and joined by Laura Kilman, our Operational Team Leader, who's the scientific brains behind the Inform Protein Program Testing. In this webinar, we'll introduce the industry's first protein certification program, specifically verifying that the protein content meets label claim, does not contain harmful contaminants, and providing reputable brands with more tools to build trust with their customers. Before we get into the details about the INFORM protein program, I'd like to walk you through the history and evolution of the INFORM programs. The INFORM programs got their start in the spring of 2007 with the launch of INFORM Choice in North America. This was one of the industry's first certification programs specifically targeting inadvertent contamination of prohibited substances in sport and dietary supplements. This was an industry-led approach ensuring that the products sold to athletes and consumers did not contain substances which could cause an athlete to fail a drug test. The program included testing but also included a thorough assessment of the manufacturing facilities to minimize the risk of contamination through proper cleaning and handling of high-risk materials in the production facility. This was the foundation for all of the INFORM programs to follow. In 2008, LGC launched INFORM Sport, which was the sister program to INFORM Choice in the UK and Europe. Whereas Informed Choice was a retail monitoring program, Informed Sport required every batch to be tested, which is what the anti-doping community required for recognition. As the programs grew, so did the extension to supply chain, where manufacturing sites could be certified under Informed Sport and Informed Choice, as well as ingredients. The growth of the programs also began to grow internationally outside of North America and Europe, into territories such as South Africa, Australia, Japan, and India from 2012 to 2018. In all, the INFORM programs include brands, brands from over 43 countries and sold in over 150 countries, making the INFORM programs the leaders in supplement certification programs. The INFORM certification marks were rebranded in 2017 to provide clear brand positioning for each program, including a new look, messaging, and individual websites for each certification program. The informed certifications include B2C marks, including informed sport, informed choice, and informed, pro informed protein, which are consumer facing. These marks help build trust between the consumers and the brand through both testing and manufacturing quality audit audits. Informed manufacturing and informed, informed ingredient are our B2B marks. They build trust between the supply chain and the brands, but also through testing and through thorough manufacturing audits. Informed Protein is LGC's first program outside of banned substance certification. LGC's rich 180-year heritage of building solutions to industry challenges allowed us to expand our portfolio to further develop relationships and trust with consumers, industry partners, and the scientific community. The goal, was, the goal we set was to provide a robust certification program with accurate results, fit for purpose, and cost effective so any reputable company can participate. I think you'll agree that we've accomplished this goal. One question we sometimes get from the industry is, is there really a problem? Do consumers really care? In the 16 years since the program first launched, we get questions from consumers through our informed websites on a daily basis. Some of the most frequent questions we get from our informed choice and informed sport websites are directly related to protein products in the program. Do you test for label claim? Do you test for heavy metals or pesticides? Are the products tested for harmful, harmful contaminants such as melamine? They've seen the news stories where they have concerns about what they're putting in their bodies. Consumers also want value, especially when cost of living keeps going up every year, but they don't want to give up on quality. They're willing to spend more if they know the product is what they say it is and the pro it's a product that they can trust. We're all consumers and we all shop for products where we don't always know much about the brand or the products. People go to product reviews to see what other people have experienced with the product, positive or negative, to help them decide if the product is a good quality or not. They ask friends, they'll ask expert advisors such as nutritionists, anyone who could validate on whether this is a trustworthy brand or product. Third-party certification is a very useful tool where a brand can talk to a customer about their quality, what they go through to ensure the product not only meets the highest quality standards, but is safe for them to use. The certification mark is a reflection of the brand, its integrity, and its trustworthiness. 
If they trust this product, they will likely trust the brand. It builds loyalty. From an industry point of view, we all know protein is a very competitive market, often with low margins. Shelf space is at a premium and can be difficult to get. Brands we have spoken to throughout the years have expressed frustration with competitors cheating, not meeting label claim to offer a lower price and beat them out for, for shelf space. Brands and manufacturers have also resorted to amino spiking. This is where they would substitute the actual protein with cheaper aminos high in nitrogen. This was meant to trick the basic nitrogen combustion tests. The products were tested and showed the amount of nitrogen matched the amount of protein in the product, but in reality, the products were well under label claim, less cost to produce, and consumers were being cheated. Reputable brands were also being cheated. In a recent survey conducted by LGC, over 60 products were purchased at retail, both online and brick and mortar stores, covering, a various, covering various protein types, such as protein isolates, uh, whey protein, blends, egg protein, casein, and plant-based proteins is an example. 25% of the samples tested did not meet label claim, with one as low as 20, 27% of label claim. 25% of the samples did not meet label claim. That's a big number. Although a few of the products look to be victims of formulators not understanding the nitrogen conversion factors and inadvertently underspecking protein within the formula, many of the products were well under that margin of error. For the industry, informed protein levels, for the industry, informed protein levels the playing field for quality brands providing the highest quality of product to their consumers. So how is informed protein different than standard nitrogen testing. Informed protein is more than just testing for nitrogen, but three separate tests to verify protein content and label claim. These tests provide the necessary checks to ensure amino spiking didn't occur and the amount of protein in the product meets or exceeds label claim. We also test for harmful contaminants such as melamine, amylene, amylide, cyanuric acid, which has shown up in protein products over the years. We also have brands and manufacturers provide proof of testing for heavy metals and pesticides from an ISO 17025 accredited lab. This is a common question we get from consumers on our informed certified products. Protein program. They include a manufacturing assessment questionnaire where we interrogate the manufacturing processes. It includes pre-certification testing with a minimum of three different batches from each product certified. We verify the actual protein level by assessing the total nitrogen content in a, in a product and the assessment of free amino acid concentrations to evaluate any non-protein nitrogen that might be present. It includes an adulterant screen. This analysis for four common protein adulterants as mentioned in the previous slide. It includes heavy metal and pesticide residue analysis. This is where brands can arrange testing with an accredited lab or LGC can direct to a partner lab if requested or needed. On an ongoing, there's an ongoing evaluation of the carbon nitrogen ratio to further ensure the batch consistency from batch to batch. And finally, post certification testing. This is done by way of monthly blind sample testing by a, an LGC administrator. There are four include stage one. A full review of the procedures in place at the facility is undertaken via paper-based assessment by an experienced LGC assessor. This is the same review that is carried out with our other informed certification programs. Product formulations are then reviewed to establish the types of protein used, the amount of protein included in the formulation, and the protein levels on the packaging level. This tells us what the product is supposed to be based on the product formula and label. Stage two, pre-certification sample testing. LGC must test the protein content of three samples across a minimum of three production runs or batches. All samples are tested for total protein content, and that's done via the determination of total nitrogen, total carbon, free amino acids, and a range of nitrogen-rich adulter adulterants. All samples must meet 100% of protein label claim for certification. Heavy metal and pesticide testing must also be carried out by a qualified laboratory and submitted to LGC for review once per year. Stage three, product certification, logo use, and web listing. 
once stages one and two are complete, the product will be accepted for certification with the informed protein program. An informed protein certificate will be issued, after which time a brand may use the informed protein logo in association with their newly certified product. The certified product will be listed on the informed protein website along with all tested batches of the product. In stage four, post-certification testing. Finally, post-certification testing to maintain compliance in the program. This includes monthly blind testing to independently ensure the integrity of that product. If the product has more than one flavor, we'll rotate through each flavor each month. For example, one month we'll do chocolate, the next month we'll do vanilla, the third month we'll do strawberry, and so on. If a product is produced less than 10 times per year, we offer an every batch testing option so we are not testing more than 12 samples per year. All tested batches are listed on the informed protein website on a dedicated product page. In addition to routine product testing, production processes and manufacturing facilities are regularly reass reassessed to ensure ongoing program compliance. Now, Laura's gonna take you through the next few slides to talk about the testing criteria. Laura, over to you. Hi, thanks so much, Paul. I'm Laura Kilman, our Operations Senior Team Leader. I'm responsible for all the technical aspects of the Informed Protein Program and lead the team that performs the analytical work that supports it. I'm gonna sneak in here and just take a few slides to give you some details about this work and how it relates to what's essential for protein testing. All protein verification testing begins here with elemental analysis. Elemental analysis is widely used in the food industry for a variety of quality testing applications, and they're generally used to support label verification. So the methods validated to support the informed protein program contain the industry standard nitrogen assessment, including additional control via the utilization of nitrogen to protein factors specific to each product's formulation. The formulation of each product undergoing certification is subjected to a technical review prior to testing to establish the relevant factor for each product. Products which contain multiple sources of protein utilize a bespoke composite factor to assess its protein claim when it's determined that the generic 6.2 factor is inappropriate. Furthermore, supervision of a product's ratio of elemental carbon to nitrogen provides a level of transparency for a brand on the products carrying their name. An increase in the amount of nitrogen detected with respect to carbon could indicate an unnaturally concentrated source and has been utilized um, in a, that has been utilized in an attempt to deceive this test. So understanding each of these factors is crucial in elemental testing when employing it to assess protein in food. Why is it so vital to accurately assess nitrogen when performing a protein assessment? The protein is comprised of peptides, which are built via extensive chains of amino acids. And these chains are built by carbon, frequently called the backbone of life. And amino acids are naturally rich in nitrogen. Because of this established relationship in the framework of protein, the two elements play a diagnostic role in this assessment. So following an assessment of the intact protein, we'll move on to an LC-MSMS analysis of the unbound amino acids and other nitrogen-rich substances, which were just previously mentioned in other slides. This is achieved via two tests, which encompass all essential and non-essential amino acids, as well as the commonly seen nitrogen-rich substances utilized to fortify supplements, such as carnitine and creatine. This test is uniquely designed to monitor only substances which are present in addition to the whole protein in a product's formulation. And because of this idea is what a product claims to contain in fact true. If a sample is tested in this way, you will only have visibility on the factors which would falsely boost a sample's protein determination. Alongside the amino acid analysis is an assessment of melamine, amylene, amylide, and cyanuric acid. These compounds are widely associated with protein scandals in our industry and have clear safety standards associated with them. So our methods are designed to detect well below the safety limit published by the FDA, which equips us to provide our brands a higher standard of testing. Uh, each of these tests combined give the brand the best picture of the protein in the product they are selling to the consumer. When considering the market demand for a protein verification program, 
we first had to determine if the consumer was at risk. In this context, risk was defined as deception with respect to the quality of the product, as well as any safety implications there might be if a manufacturer or a raw material supplier were using unethical practices to reduce operational costs. Over the years, we've conducted several analytical surveys of supplement products to provide ongoing support for supplement manufacturers and athletes and general consumers. And in this study, the objective was to assess protein content when compared to label claims. A variety of protein sources were included in this survey. As mentioned before, we had casein and ag, milk, pea, soy, and whey. Due to the availability and popularity, the majority of the products were protein-based or milk-based, which is a reflection of the market that we're serving. The survey focused on protein powders and ready-to-drink protein beverages. 90% of products tested were powders and about 10 were ready-to-drink beverages. So all testing was performed using the previously described methods validated to meet ISO 17025 requirements. All protein tests were reviewed utilizing industry accepted rallying rules as well as the applicable measurement of uncertainty with respect to these methods. So as mentioned, 25% of these products did not meet their claim. 10% fell between 95 and 98% of their claim. Another 10% fell between 90 and 95% of their claim. And then 5% of them fell below the 90% claim mark. Of the three egg products tested specifically, we had one test and only 25% of its claim. We purchased a second unit of this product months later and were able to reproduce the result that had been originally detected. So this perfectly illustrated that not all products are what they seem. I'm going to hand it back over to you, Paul. Thank you, Laura. Now we'll go through the pricing structure and how it's broken down and what's included. The certification fee starts with a manufacturing assessment audit, the calculation and testing for protein content of three nitrogen screens, a CN ratio determination, free amino acid screen, and adulterant screen. So your certification fee covers your testing and your, your manufacturing audit. After the product's certified, then we have our monthly line sample testing fees, and that includes the calculation of the protein content, CN analysis uh, screen, the free amino screen, and the adulterant screen. So that's what's being tested each and every month. And then finally, the annual membership fee, which is generally just a re-review of the member materials, um, formulas, and evaluation of any heavy metals and pesticide residue uh, C of A's that are provided. So this is a kind of a chart of how the pricing structure would, would look like. So pricing is based on whether the product is certified with just informed protein or if it's also certified with informed choice or informed sport. Since some of the audit work has already been carried out with the other programs, we're able to offer a discounted rate if the product is certified in both programs. Here's what the pricing breakdown would look like for products that are only certified with informed protein. Discounts are offered based on the overall number of products certified in the program, and it's consistent with the tiers of our other informed programs. So the tiers are one to two products certified, tier two, three to eight products certified, uh, 12 blinds per year, and then you can see what the individual fees and costs would, would be. The last two columns in the chart show you what your annual cost per product would be based on the tier you've qualified for. So if you tiered for, uh, qual you know, if you had, Tier one, and you qualified um, one of two products, you're looking at about $4,800 per year. Um, if you're in tier four, that's $4,000 in the first year, for example. For brands that are already certified with Informed Sport or Informed Choice, this is a perfect bolt on program for more benefits. When considering the tiers, we include all products certified over all Informed Certified programs. For example, if you have 10 products certified with Informed Choice, but only three that are sort of our uh, informed protein products that will price you at the tier for 10 products, not three. This slide shows what the pricing would look like for products that are certified with informed protein and either informed choice or informed sport. So this is your bundled program pricing. You'll notice that the current certification fee and testing fees have been discounted to reflect, reflect the duplication on the manufacturing assessment and sample purchases. 
This bundled pricing makes it very cost-effective way to enjoy multiple certifications at a lower annual cost. In this, in this example, again, you'll see tier one, your price goes down from 4,800 down to 3,000 for the first year, and level four tier will drop you down to 2,300. So making it a very portable bolt-on program to your existing informed choice or informed sport programs. In summary, the program provides the following benefits. It provides transparency in the industry to set your brand apart from disreputable competitors. It ensures the protein ingredients consumers are paying for are actually in the final product. It's a cost-effective bolt-on with other informed quality assurance programs such as informed choice or informed sport and offers bundled pricing. It has a dedicated website to showcase certified products and brands. And finally, it provides assurance and transparency to your customers to build trust and loyalty with your brand. We have a dedicated website, informprotein.com, that you can access either there or through We Test You Trust. And this will include a dedicated profile page for your certified products. It will include photos, batch information. You can add links uh, to purchase the product so consumers can find your product and they know where to buy it. And it's searchable by formulation, regional, regional availability, goal, protein type, and product category. The marketing materials that we have available are electronic brochure, which overviews the, the current certification process. Our protein supplement survey that we, we spoke about earlier is available for download. And then what is, inform, uh, what is a informed protein video that you can share with your own website or social media sites? product pages on the website and how your product would be displayed. You can see how beneficial this is to the consumer looking for all the relevant information about your product so they can make an informed decision before they buy. This concludes the webinar. I want to thank you for your time and feel, please feel free to contact your regional business development manager whose names and contact information is, is available on this screen, but you can contact them for any questions or want any more information about the program or how to get the process started. Thank you very much.